This video is sponsored by Jason Stevenson. If you guys are looking for some awesome guided meditations, then please do yourself a favor and go check out his website, jasonstevenson.net and his YouTube channel. So I just did an Instagram live stream and someone brought up something very interesting and basically along the lines of, I've tripped 25 plus times and I've never had a bad trip. Maybe this is just because I'm a positive person. And I've noticed this a lot where the people will say like, oh, I've had this many trips and because I haven't had a bad trip, therefore it's never gonna happen to me kind of thing. And uh, that's awesome. Some people are just more prone to having positive experiences and cool, awesome. But I think that there is a danger with this sort of arrogance because just because you've never had a bad trip, it doesn't mean that you won't. And this video isn't necessarily about fear mongering or anything like that because I think that just makes it worse anyway. But I think it's important to acknowledge the reality of it. And you, you can think of a psychedelic trip like a physical trip, like, you know, going traveling and things like that. And people have done the same thing. Like, oh, I don't need insurance. I've never had anything bad happen to me until they do, right? Just because you've walked down a dark alley a hundred times and never got mugged before, it doesn't mean that if you're not careful, that there is a possibility that you can get jumped and you can get brutally raped and murdered. Like that is a reality of it. Like that is a possibility that can happen if you're not careful. And I'm not even necessarily saying that this is the same with psychedelic trips, but I think it's important and wise to go into it with more caution, not fear but a healthy level of respect, you know what I mean? Like make sure you got your shit ready, you got your tools, you got your compass, you got plenty of water, and things like this, just in case you get lost in the abyss, you know what I mean? Instead of just going arrogantly of, nothing bad's ever happened to me. <laughs> and it's this naive optimism that can be very damaging because uh, if you've never had a bad experience, well, I don't, even, I don't want to say good or bad because there is a difference between a good trip and a, and a... Sorry, there's a difference between a bad trip and a challenging trip. A challenging trip being a challenging experience that may have been very uncomfortable during the time but in the long term yielded positive benefits, right? These have been all my trips. So in that aspect, I guess I've never had a bad trip before. But I would be very arrogant and ignorant to say that people don't have bad trips where they have you know one psychedelic dose and <clears throat> psychosis or they lose their fucking minds because their f foundation was very fragile and that's the thing about being prone to let's say psychosis or mental illness or maybe you're a bit crazy is that you don't know you are until it's too late until you get over the edge. It's like the Joker says, all you need is a little push. See, madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. <laughs> right, and he proved that with Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent was the shining white knight example of Gotham and an example of justice and good and what a hero should be. And then look what ended up happen happening to him under the wrong circumstances. He was a good person and he wasn't naive by any means, but he got in a situation where he got severely traumatized and bitter at the world and the Joker swooped in, gave him that little push and he became one of the most notorious villains of the Batman universe. And not everyone is as strong-willed as Harvey Dent. So I was just talking about uh, that live stream and then that person saying like, oh, <laughs> you're so small. <laughs> Hey! I was just explaining how this naive optimism and arrogance is the exact thing that gets people fucked up. Mm -hmm. And it might not, that's the thing, it might not, but that's. Are you really going to leave it to a roll of a die? And it's let like it, you're you know asking what I mean? for trouble. It's like it's what you did. Yeah, well, and, I, and I was just saying that not you don't know, like you. You could be just one little push away from your, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Your your whole All psyche this time, to fall You could be just yeah. tapping on the glass and it's slowly crack, but you have no idea and you're tapping, tapping, crack, 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 crack. One day, you don't know, it might not, it doesn't need to take a punch for it to, well, I'm yeah, done. It doesn't need. <laughs> It doesn't need to take a punch to break through the glass. It could just be a simple, and that's it. The glass yeah. shatters, and you're on the other side, and you can't come back. 
And I was just explaining, like, and everyone thinks that they're strong-willed enough or they never, it will never happen to me because people don't want to accept the reality of it. Actually, now that I think about it, I am Jesus. <laughs> um, that's blasphemy. I take that back. Uh, like I was saying, though, is that everyone, you don't know that you could just be one little tiny push away from madness. And I think that most human beings on this planet don't, doesn't want to accept the fact that you may not be as good as you think you are. And I'm using that as an example because if someone like Harvey Dent can go towards a path of evil and corruption, what makes you think that you can't? Right? And you don't know, and I think because people don't have that, um... Because most people haven't gone through like a, a, a really terrifying trip, so they don't even know uh, the realm, like these realms and what they contain and what they can actually do. And I think that a lot of people, I saw this, this YouTuber, and he was talking about like, you know, I've had bad trips before, like, you know, I've seen demons and had a psychotic breakdown, thought my whole family was going to kill you, and you know, I recovered from that. And that's the thing, that's, yeah, from your experience, that's the most terrifying trip you've had, but it always goes deeper. That's like, nah, that with that as well, um, it's, it's got to do with trauma. Because yeah. I, because after the um, when we got held up at the bottle shop, the counselor she got held up at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not funny. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Serious um, face now. Anyway, uh, the counselor did say something because he saw me and he's like, "You seem fine," and I'm like, "I kind of am fine. Like, it's it's yes, it's a terrible thing. Yes, I am." somewhat traumatic, traumatized, but you know, I'm, I'm okay about it. And he did say that trauma can arise in, in different ways. Like you might not feel it straight away. Um, it, you might never feel it. You might feel it, it, like it just takes one trigger. And when my car got broken into, that for some reason triggered me and I felt really unsafe and started crying and it brought a lot of stuff back mm. up. So no matter what, like this person is probably, like, yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and I recover and it's like, it's probably because he hasn't actually dealt with it or truly... Like the actual reality of it. Yeah, I think that yeah. it's, it, it, all, all sometimes gone, it's, yeah. sometimes it's the mind that's kind of like, nope, we're not ready to deal with this yeah. quite yet. So like I'm really? going to put this on pause. And then one day it could just, like I said, shatter the glass and that's it. You're yeah, 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 on yeah. your knees crying because they took the last ice cream. Yeah. Well, it's like the in Peru when I had that, cra like the worst horrific trip of my life. But even after that, I still went back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no, that didn't affect me. And I didn't actually realize until months later until the Aboga trip, the whole existential crisis. Mm -hmm. And I guess my point is that just because you've had a horrific trip, of demons and thinking you're gonna die, and I've had those trips. You've been there. You've seen me in that state, okay. and it's terrible. But that's nothing compared to the potential of how much darker you can go. And again, I'm not saying this to like fear monger or scare, but it's just to be prepared. But at the same time, those dark trips taught me the most about myself, and uh, I don't consider that any of my past trips have been bad. But that's only because I'm lucky. But I would be arrogant to say that there is no such thing as bad trips, because there are people who never recover. Ever. Some people go to a mental institution for the rest of their life because they had one. And it's not even the psychedelic fault, because that's the thing. Like when you start having this open critical discussion about psychedelics, people get very attached and think that you're I'm attacking psychedelics, but it's, mm -hmm. I'm attacking people's arrogance towards psychedelics. Because they're very powerful tools. Make no mistake about that. <laughs> they can either better your life or ruin your life if you do it in the wrong context. And it all starts with the arrogance. So you gotta, how would you say, like not approach it fearfully, of course, because that can trigger these bad trips. Like go into it. Without any expectation? Yeah, like have a pure intention, set yourself up for it, but go into it with a healthy level of respect. Don't judge anything that comes along, mm. let it swirl, let it boil, let it froth, let it do whatever it needs to do. Um, just don't, yeah, just don't resist. Yeah, don't try to control it. And um, Don't try to analyze it. But what I was, was about to saying, what, what sorry. <laughs> That's all folks. 
what I was about to say is that when you go into these trips, that you should, you know, bring a flashlight, a compass, make sure you bring some water in case you get lost. Hmm. You know what I mean? And that, I think that's uh, why it's good to go with like a guide. I know a lot of people like to say trip sitters. And a trip sitter is better than having no one at all. But if you can have like a practitioner, a master of that particular substance that you're taking, it's even better, man. You know what I mean? It's like the difference of getting a martial art lesson by your mate Barry because he saw a few Bruce Lee movies and getting martial art lessons from a fucking master at what he does. You're going to get a lot more out of the Zen master, I think it's safe to say. But yeah, that's it, guys. So uh, moral of this video. I am your cult leader and you must... <laughs> oh shit! Uh, uh, <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> You're a lot heavier than I uh, anticipated. What I was going to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. moral of the video. <laughs> oh, Obey <Jesus>. me. <laughs> uh, yeah, stay safe. Uh, know what you're getting yourself into, research the substance you, you are taking and work on building your foundation and don't be so arrogant when going into these things because you will get hyper slapped by the psychedelic gods and that is just inevitable. You might have a hundred good trips, right? But it could be that hundred and first trip that fucks you up, so you don't know. I'm very proud of where you are today, mentally, Thank you. I appreciate internally. It. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so that's it. Stay safe. Test your shit. Research. Take care of yourselves. Much love. Happy New Year. I don't even know when this video is going to come up, but yeah. Peace out.